So in the previous video, we went through the SN1, SN2, E1, E2 decision and introduced the concept of these four questions. And the last one we talked about, the first one we talked about actually, was the type of substrate. And we said that basically if it's primary, you want to look mostly for an SN2 type reaction. If it's tertiary, you want to rule out SN2. And in this video, we're going to talk mostly not about the type of substrate. We're going to assume that you've already asked this question. The second question to really ask is what type of nucleophile or base are you looking at? And this would mean it's either strong or weak. So let's have a look at this topic in particular. So let's divide bases and nucleophiles into two rough categories. We're going to say strong and weak. And I'll put quotation marks in here because it's not going to be 100% accurate uh, according to what we normally use as our definition of strong and weak. One best way to look at strong versus weak is, is just, is it charged or not? Charged or neutral? Charged or neutral? And this is an effective way to sort of divide the question and make it a little bit more easy to look at is, does it bear a charge? So let's look at some examples of strong nucleophiles. For example, NaOH. Now you might not draw those charges in, but NaOH is a prototypical example of a strong nucleophile or base. We're not really going to distinguish base nucleophile here. Um, another example of a strong nucleophile might be, let's say, KSCH3 or CH3, C triple bond, C lithium. I mean, generally, if you see like a potassium, sodium, or lithium present, you're looking at a strong base or a strong nucleophile. Uh, N3 minus another example, strong nucleophile. Um, you know, even the halides, which we'd normally not really want to consider to be very strong bases or strong nucleophiles, under these conditions, we would consider them. We want to be looking at them as nucleophiles. They're going to be participating as nucleophiles. Okay. And under the weak category, we're looking at neutral species. So we're going to look at uh, CH. 3OH, H2O, things like CH3, CH2, OH, um, acids such as CH3, CO2H. These are all neutral species, uh, CH3, SH. Um, and under these types of conditions, you would probably expect um, that these neutral species are going to not do the SN2. So we've already so we've already decided that if we've already looked at the sub type of substrate and we've already decided that if it's primary, if it's primary, then these are in play, right? These could these could do the SN2. But we've already asked that question. So if you haven't come to an answer yet, um, whether it's going to be SN1, SN2, E1, E2, the next question to ask is, is it strong or weak? And so if you see that it's neutral, um, then it's not going to be SN2. If you see that it's strong, so it's charged, you can rule out not SN1 or E1. And actually, instead of not SN2, we can also rule out E2 here. We can not SN2, not E2, not SN1 or E1. Okay, so that divides it up quite neatly. If you're looking at a charged base or nucleophile, it's not going to be SN1 or E1. If it's a neutral base or nucleophile, you're looking at it's not going to be SN2 or E2. Okay, so one extra little piece of information about the base or nucleophile that can help to actually make the decision a little easier is if we go in a little bit more detail, a little bit more detail might help us figure out actually um, whether we can even divide it a little bit even cl more closely into substitution and elimination reactions. So these are all, these are all strong nucleophiles and bases we have here. So, like I said, this is sort of optional, but it's a little bit of extra detail which can really help figuring out SN2 and E2 in certain cases. So if we're looking at a strong nucleophile or base, these are all negatively charged, you know, uh, we can sort of arrange their base strength from weak to strong. So these, I said, these are in quotes, strong nucleophiles and bases. And I'm saying that they're, these, are, these are weak. So the contradiction is just we're saying strong either word charged. Let's, look, let's change strong to charged. 
So for our charged nucleophiles, the weak ones usually have a pKa of the conjugate acid of about minus 8 to minus 10 up at the very top here. These are the halides. And then as we go, we get the bases get stronger and stronger. Um, so Cn, N3, SH, SR minus. The pKa of the conjugate acid is about 12 here. And then we get to OH minus, OR minus, NH2, and so forth. So we're getting into much stronger base territory here. So one good way to cut it is here. So anything kind of below this line, anything above this line is, is not usually a strong enough base to do E2. It's not a strong enough base to do the E2. So in other words, it's going to be SN2. Um, almost certainly going to be SN2 at, at this point, assuming you've already asked, you answered the substrate question. And below here, it still doesn't answer our question. It could still below uh, a pKa of, 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 of so stronger than 12. Um, it could still go either way. So we need more information. So in other words, we're going to look at now, we're going to look at the solvent. And the solvent is going to tell us whether or not this reaction is going to go through an SN2 pathway or an E2 pathway. So bottom line for this uh, video here is just look at the nucleophile, decide whether it's charged or neutral. If it's charged, you're looking at, you're, you're going to rule out SN1 or E1. So in other words, it's going to be SN2 or E2. If it's weak, it's you're gonna it's not gonna be SN2 or E2, so you're gonna look at SN1 or E1. In other words, you're gonna form a carbocation. So those are the that's the sort of way to ask about the base and nucleophile question. And in the next video, we'll really go through how to look at the solvent and what that can tell us about the SN1, SN2, E1, E2 decision.